All right, thanks, Simon. And now for a few housekeeping items. Um, if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to close any other programs that are running in the background to avoid running into any image or sound glitches in the Adobe Connect room. Although Simon and I would love to stay connected via our webcam throughout the entire session, going forward we will replace the live video feed with virtual business cards in an effort to conserve the bandwidth and offer you the best remote orientation possible. All right. Although you can no longer see us, you should still be able to hear us. Due to the number of participants, we have no choice but to disable the raised hand status and to mute everyone's microphone and actually to mute our own microphone whenever today's presenters will take the lead. Again, this is done in an effort to offer you an optimal virtual experience. At any point during the session, you can adjust your speaker volume by clicking on the speaker icon located in the garnet band at the top of your screen. You can also use the status icons to give us feedback throughout the session. Also in the garnet band at the top of your screen, there should be a white silhouette of a person raising their arm. If you click on that, there should be a series of buttons allowing you to communicate with us like asking us to speak louder or softer, or showing us that you appreciate our attempts at making jokes by sending some laughter our way. Let's test this out now. Can you give us a round of applause if you've located the status icon? Great. You know what? I'm not going to lie. That feels really nice. Feel free to applaud whenever during the session. If, for whatever reason, you lose connection to the Adobe Connect Room during today's session, don't worry about it. As soon as your connection is restored, you should be able to re-enter the room using the same link as before. All right. I also want to point out the difference between the chat pod, which you currently see on the screen, and the Q&A pod, which will appear shortly. Right now, we're able to chat freely with one another using the chat pod. However, um, as some of you might have experienced it already. There are so many of us in the room that the chat pod can quickly get overwhelming. So going forward, we'll be using a Q&A pod to respond to your questions in a moderated fashion so that everyone can benefit from the information. I encourage you to use this Q&A pod if ever you have any questions for us during the session. As I said, we have a dedicated team here this morning, and we'll do our best to respond to your questions in a timely manner. Before handing the mic back to Simone, I'd like to invite you to input your student number in the poll pod at the bottom left of your screen if you haven't already done so. Don't worry, this information is confidential. It simply helps us see who is in attendance today. As you'll see, your orientation is an interactive virtual session. We're counting on your contribution over the next few hours, so don't be surprised if we prompt you for some feedback and input throughout the session as well. And now for today's agenda. All right. Thank you, Amelie. So in a few moments, we will kick off the session with a word of welcome from our Vice Pro Provost, Academic Affairs. Although she cannot be here in person today, she has prepared a greeting especially for you. Next, an upper year student will share his first year experience at U Ottawa and guide you through a reflection exercise designed to help you prepare for the fall term. Then, our wellness rep will discuss ways in which you can cultivate your wellness as a university student and take care of yourself through the ups and downs of student life. And last but not least, your faculty reps will go over important information you should know in preparation for your first term at UOttawa. Afterward, we will remain available to answer any outstanding questions you may have during a post-session Q&A. The post-session Q&A is optional, so feel free to stick around or not based on your needs. Thanks, Simon. And now folks, don't be alarmed by the change in the layout you will see on your screen in a few moments. We'll be rearranging the configuration of the pods from time to time to show only the relevant visuals for each portion. All right, so here we go. You should now see a slide that says, welcome to the Gigi's family. Can you send a smiley face my way when you see these changes? Great, okay, I'm getting your smiles, that's awesome. All right, so although you aren't able to change the layout of the pods yourself, you are able to set the slides to full screen if you wish to enlarge them. 
Now would actually be a good time to test that out if you like. In the top right corner of the slides pod, you should be able to um, enlarge or reduce the size of the slide. And if you want to send some claps our way to show us that it works, you know I'm okay with that. Great. All right, thanks folks. One of the questions we often get from students is about our mascot, the Gigi. So, what is a Gigi? At UOttawa, a Gigi is many things. It is the lead horse in a race, and being among the top research universities in the country, we definitely think that we're leaders in the post-secondary learning community. We can therefore use the term GG to refer to any one of us on campus, whether that be students such as yourself, professors, staff such as Simone or myself, or alumni. At UOttawa, the term GG also embodies the values that we embrace and promote within our community. The GG advocates for diversity, innovation, bilingualism, respect, and equality. And last but not least, our student athletes are also called GGs. We really hope that our UOttawa teams will have the opportunity to compete this year and that you'll have the chance to cheer them on as their fellow GGs. Going to the games is such fun and it's a great way to meet people. So stay tuned for updates on safety and sanitary precautions throughout the fall term. All right. We're finally ready for the word of welcome from our Vice Provost Academic Affairs. Before taking on this role, Ellen Germain Rutherford led several national and international research initiatives in pedagogy for higher education and on the development of online environments inclusive of all cultural diversity. Now she oversees program creation and modification, teaching and learning support, and program evaluation at UOttawa. She is quite the GG. We will now be playing a, uh, an audio file. If you have issues with the audio, uh, you can feel free to adjust the volume on, by clicking on the speaker icon in the garnet band at the top of your screen. Hello, as Vice Provost for Academic Affairs at the University of Ottawa, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the University of Ottawa. Or for those of you returning to the university to thank you for your fidelity. It is because of students like you, determined, committed, and engaged from across Canada and around the world, that this university can excel. This year, you will be joining the world's largest bilingual university, a community of more than 42,000 students, including nearly 7,000 international students. Of course, this year, in the context of the COVID-19, we've had to change a little bit the way we deliver our programs and activities. But all of your professors and all the academic and support staff have worked tirelessly over the past few months to ensure that your experience as a student at the University of Ottawa will be of the highest quality, engaging, inspiring, and also enjoyable. Some of your courses will be entirely online, Many will include video conferencing so that you can interact synchronously with your peers and professors. And some of you will be on campus to attend classes that could only be given in a lab or classroom on campus. But I can assure you that regardless of the format of your classes, your learning experience will be extremely stimulating and engaging. The university's various student services have prepared a very rich and exciting online orientation program for you this summer, available in both English and French. I know that more than 8,000 students have already registered for this program, where you will be able to participate in faculty-specific webinars and other activities covering all aspects of your new life at UOttawa. You'll participate in interesting and fun interactive activities with building question and answer sessions where you'll receive answers to all of your questions. This orientation program will provide you with the resources that you need to help you thrive and find your path to personal and academic success at the University of Ottawa. Let me conclude by wishing you the best of luck in your studies. Take full advantage 
of the opportunities and expertise offered by your program, your professors, and the entire university community. I also hope that you will appreciate and take full advantage of the rich bilingual and multicultural environment that the University of Ottawa offers, even online. Remain curious, daring, and creative in your studies. But above all, make the most of your years with us. You are now part of the beautiful community of the University of Ottawa. Thank you and welcome. All right, before moving on, I want to remind you folks that you can use the Q&A pod if you have any questions for us throughout the session. As you heard, we type answers as they come in. Um, if any of you are still experiencing issues with noise, I encourage you to do a couple of things. Uh, so one of them being to activate the sound using the uh, speaker icon in the garnet band at the top of your screen. One of them being shutting down any programs that are currently running in the background as they might be impacting your bandwidth and causing the sound to be very glitchy. And the other being to exit the room and then reconnecting to the room uh, to see if things are improved. And don't worry about missing out on anything. As Simon mentioned earlier, we will be making the recording of this session available to all students at a later time. All right? So, you're about to see another change in layout as we welcome our first presenter. Please send me a smiley face uh, when you see the changes on your end. I'm pleased to welcome Kalei Boutignon, a fourth year student at UOttawa. Hi, Kalei. Emily, thanks for introducing me. So we're going to get started shortly. So hi, everyone. My name is Kalei. I'm going to my last year in civil engineering. and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my first year university experience and how I got to be here speaking with you guys today. Now, obviously your first year may be slightly different than mine due to online classes and some of you not actually coming to campus for the fall semester, but overall the experience will be similar. So first, I'll tell you guys a little bit, a little bit about me. I was born in France and my parents are from France and Ireland, but I've grown up mostly in Canada and the US. This gives me a good mix of cultures and it means that I'm an adaptable enough person having moved around a good amount I came here after graduating from an American high school, so I can relate to anyone here who comes from a long way away. I wanted to come to university and specifically study engineering because I was really interested by the aspect of designing something and being present throughout the whole creation process. I wanted to come to Ottawa because when I was younger, uh, my family used to come here on uh, trips for like Easter, and I've always liked the city, and I thought that coming to university here would be a great opportunity to get to know it better. Uh, I also wanted to gain the independence that every newly graduated high school student wants, of course, too. Now, since I moved around quite a bit growing up, university wasn't my first experience coming to a new city and coming into a new environment where I didn't know anyone. Even with my background, going off to university was still an intimidating experience. I mean, for me, like, many, like for many of you, it was the first time I had a lot more responsibilities than before. For me, also living in a new city, too, was also very new and pose many challenges as I found out literally my first day in Ottawa. So it turns out that living in a new city is a lot different than visiting for a few days. Simple things like locational landmarks or key areas of the city were unknown to me. For example, on the morning of my first full day in Ottawa, I was supposed to meet my parents on Parliament Hill as we had planned to visit it. This posed a challenge for two reasons. One, I had overslept and was running late, and two, I really had no idea where Parliament was. So I wandered around campus for a good bit, trying to see if I could catch a glimpse of it as it's the tallest structure in the city. I was feeling quite overwhelmed at the time and lost and was worried I really wouldn't make it on time to the meeting. I also didn't really want to ask anyone for help because um, it kind of felt like a dumb question to me at that time because it was literally the most famous landmark in the city. So you'd think, oh, I should know where it is or be able to figure out where it is. It now seems like a foolish worry to have had, but back then I was new to everything and didn't really know anyone, so I felt quite shy. It was getting quite close to the meeting time, so I decided, whatever, I'll just ask someone. I found a student working for Welcome Week on campus, and he pointed me in the right direction without any problem at all. I ended up making it to Parliament on time, and in that moment realized that all the worries of the previous half hour were quite silly. I saw that there were so many people on campus, and that the university were more than willing to help with any problems, no matter how trivial. This really helped me to feel more comfortable and gave me motivation to explore further. 
The next step was to settle into my new home, which was Henderson residence, and to get comfortable there. I was obviously hoping to make some friends as well. I was feeling very nervous about meeting so many new people, was also eager to experience what it was like to live by myself and make it on my own. So it got to be the first evening by myself and Rez, and my parents had gone back to their hotel for the evening. I had moved in a day early, so not many people were really there yet, and I hadn't really met anyone. Even my roommate had moved in. I started hearing people walking around the halls, but wasn't really sure how to introduce myself, so I was considering just hanging out in my room for the night. Then I heard a knock on my door. I opened up and it was a few people asking if I wanted to come join them in the kitchen for cake. Now, of course, no one in their right mind is going to turn down cake. So I joined them in walking around, knocking on other people's doors and seeing if they wanted to join us too. We stayed up late chatting in the common room that evening and uh, hung out together during 101 and Welcome Week. And you know what? Some of my great friends today are people I met that night. This night sticks in my memory as the time I really started feeling comfortable in my new home. Throughout the year, this feeling of home really just grew, and I can honestly say that my time in res was one of the best things of my first year. That first evening also made me realize that all you, although university was new to me, I wasn't the only one feeling the way I was. I just had to be open-minded and friendly and be willing to look around and open myself up to new opportunities. For the fall semester, the residences will have a limited occupancy, but will still be a good way to meet people while respecting the new health guidelines. With the COVID situation, Welcome Week and 101 Week are likely to have online activities, but that doesn't mean there aren't still ex that they aren't still excellent ways to make friends that you can meet up with once everybody comes back to campus. So once I was fully set in, settled in and felt comfortable, school started and with it all the labs and assignments that you expect. Engineering is a challenging program. Sometimes I felt like I had so much schoolwork that I didn't have time for anything else. However, it's very important to be able to take some time for yourself to relax amidst all the deadlines and pressure. I remember some weeks putting all my time into studying. Although I was doing to succeed, I realized I simply wasn't getting the most out of my time. Too much focus on my studies was actually making me feel less and less motivated. I needed to take some time for myself. Now, everyone relaxes in different ways, be it reading a book, watching a movie with friends, playing sports, or going to the gym. For me, I pretty much played soccer my whole life, especially in high school, I was on both my high school soccer team and the local club team. I used to play about three to four times a week, so it was always a chance for me to take some time to de-stress. Now, coming to university, I knew I wasn't going to be able to commit as much time as I had previously done, but I still really wanted to play soccer. So I checked out the intramural sports service, which was great because it gave me the opportunity to enjoy the fun of soccer and other sports without having to make serious time commitments, and time commitments to them like I had to in the past. With the friends I made in res, we made a soccer team and made it all the way to the final of the tournament. We unfortunately lost, but it still had a fantastic time. I still play a bunch of different sports, including flag football, ultimate frisbee, with these people that I met in first year in res. If you like sports and want to stay active, I would highly recommend checking out Intramurals once it returns, as it's a great way to relax as well as to make new friends in this fun situation. If sports isn't your thing, I still encourage you to find something you like and get involved, as there are tons and tons of clubs on campus. So all you got to do is just Google something you enjoy and you'll be able to find a club for it. Overall, what I'm trying to say is that it's extremely important to find the right balance between your courses and personal time. I've known a lot of people who didn't find that balance and whose grades suffered either because they were too focused on class with no outlet for their stress or because they spent too much time in their social life and obviously neglected their studies. Now that I've found my balance, I'm motivated in my studies and also feel like I'm taking advantage of my university experience. Now, having said all this about work-life balance, at the end of the day, we're all ultimately here to learn, accomplish academic goals, and get a degree. While this takes a lot of work and focus, it is not always easy. For me, this wasn't always the easiest thing to handle, and there were times where I had real difficulties. In my first semester, I got a bit overwhelmed by all the work that I needed doing. In high school, getting good grades while not studying too hard was relatively, relatively easy for me. I found out pretty quickly that the study methods that worked in high school were not cutting it when some of my med term grades started to come back. At that point, I realized I needed to change up my studying methods, but crucially, didn't take immediate steps towards this goal, which was a big mistake. My thinking at the time was that I'd be able to bounce back by myself as I'd done in high school and didn't need help. I was also a bit scared to ask because I thought profs might not be patient about these types of things. Looking back, I realized I would have gotten back on track much quicker if I'd sought out help from the various services around campus. I learned that props are always available to help you as they also want you to succeed. There are also other resources like the Math Help Center and the Engineering Mentoring Center where students like you and me 
are, uh, are there to answer your questions and give you tips and tricks about how to succeed in your courses. During the fall semester, uh, the Mentoring Center will be working extra hard to make sure everyone is able to get the help they need. Mentors will be reaching out to students every week to answer questions and help with any problems, so I really recommend checking your email on a regular basis and to make sure to reach out when you need help. But getting back to my story, because I didn't seek out the help that I needed, I wasn't able to adjust as fast as I could have and ended up getting a few more unsatisfactory grades before things turned around. At one point, I even began to think that maybe I just wasn't good enough to be an engineer and that I would just flunk out. But when I finally adjusted my study methods, I saw noticeable improvements in my grades and uh, my stress levels really decreased, thus making my university experience a lot more enjoyable. So the moral of my story would be to make sure to reach out when you need help because getting that help promptly will allow you to recover faster and avoid any further stress. Your university journey will be filled with ups and downs, but have confidence in yourself. Nothing great is accomplished without hard work and struggle, and getting a degree in engineering is definitely something I would consider great. So after overcoming these challenges, at a certain point of the year, I got to a stage where I felt like I was really beginning to thrive. One day, I got a midterm grade back, and I was like, wow, I really thought I would have done better than this. I was confused because I felt that I had studied a lot for this exam and knew the material well. At this point though, I felt confident enough in myself to go meet the professor and ask questions about my grades so I can improve next time. We discussed the exam and discovered together that there had actually been some mistakes in the grading. I managed to get some points back and on top of it, I really felt proud of myself and my ability to succeed. To be at a point where I had enough belief in myself and confidence in my ability to question a grade was huge for me. I was now miles away from the student who had doubts about his ability to succeed in the program. Now, I'm going to my final year in engineering and I feel really great about it. Throughout my time here, I've really tried to make the most of my university experience by participating in many exciting projects, such as designing a robot for design day, designing a concrete mix, and designing a miniature bridge to test under loads. All this has even led me now to be speaking in front of all of you about my experience here. Something that if um, you told me on my first day at UATA that I would be addressing you all today, I absolutely would not have believed you. But I've made a point of embracing new experiences and challenges, and that's helped me become the person I am today. I know that everything I've experienced here has prepared me for any further challenges I'll face in life, be it for a new job or maybe even further studies. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for me, and I'll always be proud of what I've done here. I hope that all of you have the fantastic experiences I've as I'm currently having at UAuto, and I know that you will if you're willing to push your comfort zone and try new things and be adventurous. If you, like me, want to discover what you're passionate about, and what drives you to reach for it, then you definitely come to the right place. So thank you everyone for listening. And I'm going to just pass that back to you now, Amelie. Thanks, Kalei. I'm sure that you address some of our students' questions or concerns by sharing your experience. I'd like to take a few moments to ask you some of the questions we've had from the students in the past minutes. Is that all right with you? Definitely. All right. Um, what is the best way to make friends if all your classes are online? Because I'm seeing here in the, in the Q&A pod that all courses we will be online this fall. So obviously this semester is going to be a bit different than uh, obviously all previous ones. I think everyone's still trying to get used to the new situation. And obviously that's going to come with some difficulties in terms of like a non-traditional first semester. But, I mean, all of you really seem to be doing a great job in the chat of um, getting to know each other. So, you know, like the, the 101 week activities and the welcome week activities are going to be online. It's also a great opportunity to, to, do, um, to get to know everybody else. And then, like, you know, as I was saying before, hopefully once everybody gets to campus, uh, everybody can actually meet up in person and just, you know, go back to normal. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for that. Um, from all the ups and downs that you shared from your own story, of which moment would you say that you're the proudest from your first year? Um, I definitely say that um, being able to like have the persistence to bounce back from those uh, challenging few grades that I got initially uh, is probably my proudest moment because you know I think it was one of the like it was one of the you know I had coming in from high school where I really didn't have that many difficulties in terms of in terms of school to go to that was uh, was challenging and I, you know looking back I'm very proud of myself for the ability to like you know keep keep at it and keep persistence and that like that's what's important about you know once you when, when you get one bad grade you can't give up you know you got to keep keep pushing keep trying 
Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for that, Kale. And and you've done so well in turning things around that you've even become a mentor now. So you're one of the students that your peers can turn to if ever they're experiencing uh, the same challenges uh, with their, their first year transition. So that's, that's really great. Um, is there anything in particular that you would say, some concrete action or strategy that you used to overcome uh, some of the challenges that you faced in your first year and, and, and really integrate into U Ottawa and your program? Well, um, one thing I would say is obviously like uh, asking for help. You know, that was one of my big difficulties. I was like, no, no, I don't need any help. Like, I'm, I'm good by myself. But really, like, I did need help. So, you know, sometimes you come in from university being a bit, uh, from high school, sorry, being a bit too confident in your abilities. So, you know, once you get that first bad grade or something, once you have that first challenge, like, don't be afraid to reach out to the mentors, as I was saying before, or even your professors, because, you know, that's the best way to recover. And, like, you know, that's what you're, that's what you're, you have access to this, this help. So why wouldn't you uh, use it? So definitely that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kale. Um, all right, folks, now that we've heard the chance and we've had the chance to hear the perspective of an upper year student, it's time for you guys to start thinking about what your first year experience might be like, what your challenges might be as well. So we'll do another change in layout to give everyone the chance to participate. All right. You should see something different here on screen now. You should see slides with some kind of roadmap, right, on the road to success. If you guys want to send me some claps or some smiles just to show that you've, you're following us, you're, you're on the same layout as we are, great. Awesome. All right, Kale, I'll hand things back to you. Okay, so yeah, as you can see on the screen, uh, this is what we like to call the roadmap, roadmap to success. And basically, um, the way I like to think of it is it represents the, like a typical university journey. You know, it's not like a straight line. There's ups and downs, there's like tough moments, there's also like high points, but like the important is that in the end, you end up higher off than you started. So I can see that some of you started already answering the first question, which is good. Um, so the first question is, what do you think you will need for the first week of classes? So I'm going to give you like three minutes maybe, and then we can talk about it. All right, so answer the question. Okay, so it looks like most of you have answered. I'm going to give a couple more seconds in case anybody is um, running late. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll. So, um, what do you think you will need for your first week of classes? So, let's see, the most popular answer is my textbooks. So yeah, obviously textbooks are a big part of uh, university learning. But um, one thing I would recommend about your textbook is to wait until you have your first class with your professor because sometimes, for example, the textbook will be indicated on the syllabus as being as a like just you know the professor will put it on the syllabus but you won't actually need it or like it'll be like optional or your professor will say like yeah you can get this if you want to but you don't really need it so obviously like you don't want to spend any money that you don't have to because they are expensive so you know being able to wait until the first week before getting your stuff is also a good idea in my opinion now we also got my course outlines yeah obviously read your course outline familiar size familiarize yourself with what the material in the class is going to be. 
you know, like maybe fill out your calendar, see what your deadlines are going to be. And um, that's definitely a great idea. Some sort of an agenda or calendar. Yes, there's definitely a big one. Um, I think one of the most important parts about university is staying, um, staying organized and managing your time well because, you know, I don't think, I think this is the, the first time in your life that you have a lot of, you know, you a lot of responsibilities like, you know, uh, school, maybe work, you know, uh, hanging out with your friends and socializing. So all that can sometimes get overwhelming. So, you know, having an agenda, a calendar to keep track of deadlines is uh, really the, the best, uh, the best way to make sure you're on top of everything. Also a dedicated work study place. Yeah, for me, um, it's my desk in my room and like, you know, I don't do anything else at my desk except for study. So I know that that's my place that when I sit down there, like I have to focus uh, as much as like, I might not want to study in that moment, you know, like you gotta, like you gotta set aside an area where it's like, okay, this is my designated studying area. I know that when I'm here, I have to focus and I have to get stuff done. So just so I end up, we'll, we'll take a look at a couple of the other answers. So yeah, uh, I see here a list of questions. That's a good idea. Obviously with um, classes being online, stuff's gonna be a little different this year. And uh, you know, having a, a list of questions of stuff you need answered from your professor is also a good idea and a good way to uh, make sure that everything is, is going smoothly. All right, so thank you for your answers, everyone. We're gonna move on to the next question real quick. So how will you find balance between school work and your social life? So I'll give you a couple minutes again, and then we'll talk about it. success over the last uh, last two weeks that you just want to highlight other than within your own sectors just something you think really stood out Okay, so it looks like pretty much everyone has answered. I'll give a couple more seconds just in case. Okay, so we're going to end the poll. Hopefully everybody's answered. All right, so how will you find balance between school, work, and your social life? Obviously a big question. Um, so the most popular answer is devote time to activities other than my studies. Yeah, I am a big, uh, big believer in, you know, making sure you don't put too much time and too much, uh, too much energy uh, that you uh, don't have time to do anything else in your life. Because obviously you're at university not just to learn, but you're also there to, um, you know, have a at least a good time, you know, try and um, try and make some good friends and, you know, do good activities and stuff like that. So definitely not spending all your time on having a, a way to like, you know, relax after your studies is a great idea. Seeking help when I need it. Yeah, definitely. Seems like you guys learned from my story. So that's good. Um, you know, there's a ton of resources on campus. Um, chief among them being the uh, mentoring center, as Emily was saying that I'm currently a mentor at the mentoring center and you know this this semester is going to be a, a big part of academic life hopefully because um, we're going to be reaching out making sure all the students have everything they need you know everyone uh, you check their emails as I was saying before and uh, you know it's a great way to like uh, get help when you need it um, what else we got we got get enough sleep yeah obviously you know definitely not a good idea to um, 
pull an all-nighter before an exam, for example, because obviously your brain isn't able to uh, to work as well if you're tired. So make sure to get enough sleep for sure. Um, let's see. Let's look at the other answers. We have putting time into hobbies. Yeah, definitely a good one because um, you know first year sometimes um, the courses are very theoretical. So you know if you have a pet project on the side. Um, you know, it's a it's a good idea to uh, to uh, look into those and try and like you know pursue your other interests. Not only doing doing your schoolwork, but if you're interested in doing other project, you know, a pet project by yourself, that's also a great option. Okay, so thank you everyone for your answers. So we're gonna switch on to the next question. What will you need to stay motivated and productive? So once again, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. Okay, so just a couple more seconds. Seems like everyone's pretty much answered, so I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. Okay, so what will you need to stay motivated and productive? Um, most popular answer is manage my time effectively, yes. So I would definitely say that effective time management is like probably the most important skill you can have in university with um, having to manage so many things at the same time. It's definitely a good idea to like, you know, plan out your days, plan out like if you want to take certain afternoons off, like Friday afternoon or something, or, um, you know, like set aside, you know, two hours a day or more for studying and stuff like that. Really just planning and managing it properly, not really procrastinating too much. Definitely a good idea. Stay on top of my workload. Yes, that one too. So uh, the best way to succeed in engineering, I suppose, with all the material, because it is a very material and intensive program that, you know, every time after your class, you know, you got to, you go home, uh, you make sure you understand all your material, you know, read over your notes again. If you don't understand something, you can contact your, your professor or your teaching assistant and, uh, you know, really make sure that you don't fall behind and stuff because it can be challenging if you don't understand, you know, like a couple weeks in a row. Um, well, you know, it can be it can be tough and it can build up and then makes things a lot more stressful for you. So that definitely make sure to stay on top of all the material. Check in with my teacher or teaching assistant. So, yeah, definitely uh, going to see the professors and, uh, you know, TAs is definitely a, a good idea because um, they'll, they'll show you how to, like, if you don't understand something that maybe they said in class, maybe a one-on-one -on -one session will help you, help you more. And uh, that can definitely push you to, you know, be more productive, more motivated. So that's definitely a very positive thing to do. And participate in study groups, yes. Yeah, so study groups are one of the things that the Mentoring Center offers. And as well as being a, a good way to, uh, you know, it's not, I like them because you get to get a different perspective from the professor. Sometimes maybe, you know, it does happen that you have trouble understanding uh, what the professor is trying to convey. So if you 
like another if you want to want to get another view from that you can go to a study group and uh, you know the the mentors there who have already taken the classes before they can help you out with maybe understanding a different way maybe they learned it a different way that may, that is easier for you to understand so and it's also a good way to meet people you know like with uh, stuff being online you know small study groups where you can work together to figure out your problems and stuff like that I think it's a good option so yeah uh, so yeah um, thank you everybody for all your answers and I'm gonna pass it back to you now I'm in Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for all this. Um, I noticed that someone reached out to you directly in the Q&A asking if you had ever thought of changing from civil engineering to another field. Uh, I know you've answered this question already for this particular student, but I was wondering if you could tell our students here today if you know changing programs is an easy thing, is an easy thing to do, how common it is, basically what your thoughts are on this. So, I personally never really uh thought about changing programs but I do have uh, a few friends who uh, who definitely went about that I know it's it's you know it's something relatively straightforward obviously first year classes there's only a couple different classes depending on the program you're in so um, it's definitely something that's doable um, uh, Desiree and Jose are, who are going to be doing the faculty presentation later will tell you a little bit more about how um, all this works and how all that's done but you know definitely if um, if you'd like to change you know it's something that is Pretty easy to do, I'd say. Thank you so much. I believe you'll be staying with us until the end of the session in case students have further questions for you. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Great. <clears throat> okay, so if, if any of you folks out there have questions directly for Colin, feel free uh, to reach out to him using the Q&A pod. He'll be staying with us until the end. Uh, this brings us to the next portion of today's session, a presentation about wellness at U Ottawa. You'll soon see another change in layout as we welcome our next presenter. Here we go. Again, send, feel free to send me a smiley face or, or some claps if you see the changes on your end. <clears throat> I'm pleased to welcome April McKinnon, Senior Mental Health Advisor at U Ottawa. Hi, April. Engineering. So I'm very excited to see you guys today. I only have 30 minutes and I have a lot to talk about and share with you. So let's get started. Um, what I'm going to ask you is, you can see below um, me on the screen, there's a little uh, pod that says files. What I'd like you to do, if you're able to, and the technology allows, is actually to download the last document there that's Plan Your Wellness to Thrive. Because I'm not the type of the presenter that lets you just sit back and do absolutely nothing during my presentations. You actually have to learn. We can't fill out everything in this document today, but it's actually your own personal plan that you're working on that you'll take forward throughout your university career, hopefully. So do download if you can, and if you can't download, as I mentioned there, we can go low tech. We can just take a piece of paper, notebook, whatever you have, and a pen, which by the way, good tip, you should always have at university, and just create a simple table with seven rows uh, down and four columns across, and we'll fill it up together along the way. Basically, um, each row will be one of the seven pillars of wellness, which we'll go through step by step, so you'll have to fill it out as you go. And there's a few tips and workshops and a website that I want you to remember that I'll mention a lot during today's presentation. Okay, so I'm doing working with two screens. My apologies, he has a little patience while I do this. All right, so why should you not tune in on me today? Well. You, over the next few weeks, will be hopefully taking a lot of the um, courses and uh, workshops on academic performance which, and how to succeed academically, which is super, super important. But uh, I am speaking to the students in the fa future faculty of engineering, or future students in the faculty of engineering, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you know that the brain and the mind are attached, and uh, one component doesn't work without the other. So what this presentation will do will actually give you some ideas, evidence, and tips but the components of the actual plan that you make for yourself around your planning for your well-being, wellness for now and for your future career are up to you. Um, the best asset you really have, seed asset academically, is your brain. And what supports your brain is your body. So you need to have a plan for that. And as Colin said this morning, um, I really hope that it comes across very clearly today, especially with our times where we're all virtual, that it's really important to reach out for help. So um, this plan will also help you to figure out when I need help in certain areas, how am I going to reach it? All right, next slide. Now I'm going to ask, um, in the next slide I'm going to ask my colleagues to bring up a poll, but just before we go to that, uh, when we think of mental health, 
this is not the Hollywood definition of mental health, right? This is not some like dramatic movie. Everybody has mental health, just like everyone has physical health. You may be very healthy today, you may be unwell with the flu today or what have you, hopefully not COVID. So understanding what we mean by mental health is striking a balance in all aspects of your life, social, physical, spiritual, etc. And reaching a balance is actually a learning process. It's not um, the way Instagram influencers tend to point it out. And you have to, if you do tip your balance, which we've all experienced at some point in our lives, even when we were very young, even today, you need to figure out how to find your footing. You've had tips and techniques you developed over the years, which is great, but university uh, launches you into a whole different scenario that you have to figure out how you're going to adapt in your situation, in your career, and in your field. So what we're going to do is have a little bit of fun on the next slide. I'll ask my colleagues, if they can, to launch a poll. I want to ask you guys here, if you see this character on the screen, what do you think our human ex uh, character is experiencing? Positive stress, negative stress, or um, C? And uh, while you're thinking about that and filling out the poll, I just want to pose another question to you. Um, in this situation, how much energy and brain power do you think our little human character has to devote to learning how to do new calculations or deeply understand the teachings of a philosopher or perform a complicated dissection? Probably not that much. So it's interesting to see what you guys in the poll, say in the poll, and it's always interesting because every faculty is different. So I enjoy the people who always say the answer is always C, <laughs> just to see if you're paying any attention there. The answer is actually more complex than you think. Um, but yes, I think most of you have it right for B, but let's see what you think after I go through the next couple of slides. Okay, so the definition of stress actually may surprise a lot of people. Much of the world views all stress as bad, rather than viewing stress in its original meaning, meaning the non-specific responses of the body to any demand for change. So that's Sally's definition. And really, um, as we sort of saw from our previous little cartoon, stress is what our primal bodies are primed for and a primal reaction for fight or flight. I mean, human re um, evolution has endowed humans to be able to do this, to flee from potential danger. Um, if our hu little human character didn't have the ability to react to stress, our ancestors would be lunch. So for the human running away, stress is actually quite beneficial. It's activated all their, their systems to be able to devote everything to dealing with the situation. Um, but, but it's negative because that's not how our little human feels. It doesn't want to be chased. Uh, so that just gives you a little context. Now, if you look at the diagram in front of you, I always feel weird saying, look, you want to be in the gray area because gray is not exactly a happy color or a shade for artists out there. But ideally, what you want to be is sort of that balance where you actually have an, enough natural stress in your body that you're feeling the benefits focus attention, um, balance, feeling sort of that rational thinking, that clarity when you're really focused. You don't really want to be on the left because uh, that's actually could be lead to boredom. You're sort of under stimulated. It's kind of, eh, bleh, that's my technical definition. And on the right is where you, a lot of us, I'm sure we've all experienced this where you're sort of at that burnt out stage or there's just too much happening and your body can't cope. Ideally, you want to be in the middle. Now, things will happen in your life that bounce you around a bit, but you need to figure out how, for your life, your situation, you actually end up back in the middle. So uh, let's try a little exercise here, all right? So we've probably all had a similar experience to this, a modern stressor, missing a bus on the way to an exam or to a really important work date. Or, you know, these days being disconnected from internet just before a big event. So you've missed your scheduled bus, and you had to take a whole new route to campus. And then that bus was on detour because, uh, oh my gosh, there's a car accident up ahead. So you are, the adrenaline's starting to pump now. You have to make it to that exam in time or make it to work. You know your boss will be really peeved. Oh, so the adrenaline's pumping through your body. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You're activating that right side of the diagram, right? It's the sympathetic nervous system to really get you to deal with that crisis, which is to get that exam in time. Hoo, you make it to the exam. How do you get your body to focus again? So to activate your parasympathetic, let's try something. Inhale with me for a count, two, three, four. Hold your breath, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And wait, two, three, four. Now repeat that for me while I explain a couple things, all right? 
So what we've just done with that exercise after I stress through it with that plus scenario is we're now trying to activate the parasympathetic, the rest and digest, et cetera. And what you're doing is with that, this particular breathing exercise or any general breathing exercise is actually activating um, your the vagus nerve that goes through your diaphragm. Now, please note I said your vagus nerve, not your last vagus nerve. I do occasionally get questions about that. Vagus nerve is spelled U-S at the end there. But not your last vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is one way to activate that uh, parasympathetic to that system and use your biology to your advantage. And there are many different ways to do that, and we'll be discussing some of the options or some of the ways you can train yourself throughout this presentation. And uh, just remember, our modern lives, and most of you are experiencing a modern life because you're on a computer today and you're using internet to join in. So you're experiencing generally sort of what the current world sees as a modern lifestyle with computers. And I mean, we are experiencing so much information coming into our brains these days, different information from what our ancestors were primed to deal with to avoid being lunch. So the average person with that sort of modern, modern lifestyle um, absorbing through different mediums, 100,000 words per day. And uh, more a little bit on the left there of that di of that uh, cartoon. And in the last two years, 90% of all data in human history is basically being created. That is a huge volume for human history. And just think about all this coming at us, and it's all really hard to do. Now, we can activate our biology to clear our minds to be more like the uh, little bubble on the right there. But we need to use strategies and tools that are unique to us, our biology, and our situation. So let's figure out some of those. Now, just before we go through that, what your responsibility is to figure out where you are on the mental health continuum. As I've mentioned, today I hope all of you are in the green section and you're doing pretty well. You're absolutely loving my presentation. Stop rolling your eyes, please. But yes, you are loving it. You're thinking it's great. Okay, great. You're in the green section. I may have stressed you just a little bit, got you a little bit yellow when some of you had flashbacks to bus incidents or some other situation with transit. Um, and then you figured out through the breathing exercise, hopefully that brought you back to green and I haven't left you at yellow. We have all experienced situations where we're at that sort of injured stage in our lives where some horrible things happen, something's really difficult in our lives, and you may have um, sort of prolonged stress, your functioning is actually more significantly disrupted, you may feel sort of angry or depressed, have trouble sleeping, um, maybe experience a decline in academic performance. And this is the time to start to think about, OK, I really need some help between that sort of yellow and orange. And again, I hope not, but I would suspect all of you experience that red stage, whether it's a clinical disorder or something horrible like a death of a close um, loved one. These things happen. And um, it doesn't always mean that someone is in um, clinical distress, but you're experiencing that incredible stress load on your body from the situation. And um, that is, again, when you need to figure out how to get yourself back down the continuum or to the left, basically, um, and be more comfortable and green. So there's all sorts of tools and tricks you've developed up until now that will help you. And I think you should make sure you complete that in the document as we go ahead and as I discuss it. But there's even more available to you. And as Colin has mentioned many times, seek out the help. OK, so uh, I noticed at the bottom, Colin and I use the same wording, reach out. Now, I have been very lucky over the past few years to be able to actually present to um, students, incoming students in person, which is a lot of fun. So what we usually do at this slide is I actually make everybody sing this to me. And again, for the person in uh, the GTA area who just rolled their eyes, I'm a GTA person. I know you're going to roll your eyes, but seriously, work with me on this one. Speaking out loud is actually another way of learning, and also it's a lot of fun. So I'm sorry for those of you who are in public right now, and you're going to be like shouting random words out, but it's actually very helpful. So. The underlying words is what I want you to say. That's all you have to say. So I will say getting support is, and you're going to say normal, hopefully shouting it. That would be nice. Get support as early as possible. And then when we do this in person, it is amazing when people really, really sing last one. So I said, I say support you getting the service. And we go, reach out to get sister. All right. So I want you to try that with me. Just try it. So getting support is. Normal. Please note I'm not shedding because I don't want to burst your eardrums. Get support as early as possible. Be realistic, guys. Um, if you send an email at you know Friday at 9 a.m. and expect help by 9.30 a.m., that is a little unfair. Plan ahead as, as much as you possibly can to share with whoever you need help that, that you need help so they can plan for it, whether it's an appointment or just responding to you. So be realistic. 
if you need if you're starting to feel a little antsy around September 25th, that's the time to look for help, not December 13th. Although you can still get help on December 13th. Okay, last one. I would love a lot of power, a lot of uh, coming out from your diaphragm. And if those are your opera singers, please feel free to belt it out there. So I'm going to say, support you in getting the service. Reach out. All right. Between Colin and you guys singing out loud, I think you hopefully have got that concept and will apply it to your life. Now, uh, for those of you who have managed to download the document or you're following right along with your notes, the seven pillars of wellness I've included in the title of this slide, and you can actually also click on the whole yellow box on the slide, and it'll actually take you to a page that describes a lot of the services available at the university under those categories. I wouldn't actually look at that right now, but save it for later, please. And then we'll start going through the plan document. Okay, so what do I mean by the social pillar? I mean, the definition is on the screen, so enjoy that. Um, Prof. don't always give it to you. But social is more than just sort of fun with friends. It's super important, but it's making, making those meaningful connections. Now, with COVID-19 and everyone's life situation around the world being impacted in some way, how strong do you think you are on this pillar? Uh, go back to your planning document. So the first row is just writing in the pillar for those of you who are following around with paper. And the second row is actually rating yourself on this pillar. Who cares what the scale is? Doesn't matter. Strong, weak, scale 1 to 10, doesn't really matter. But where do you feel? Do you think you might need to work on this? Think about and reflect during presentation today. And then um, do you know where you are now? Do you know how to connect with university? Colin mentioned some ideas. You'll hear some more today. But really think about for you, how do you want to connect at the university and stay connected to your life wherever you are in the world now? Think about how social connections have helped you in the past. Uh, let's say you missed a class in high school. You had a great friend. Could you get the notes from them? How can it help you in the future? Um, in the engineering world, what kind of social connections will you need for your career? What will you need a difference if you had friends who are doctors, trying to be doctors? What kind of social connections and skills will they need? So just think about it at that level. And um, I, as, as Colin mentioned, this is the time to reach out and connect. Now, just for fun, I'm going to share my favorite social activity, particularly during COVID-19. For those of you who can, you can click on the title where it says find a social activity that works for you and save this for later. On Friday mornings, we actually do virtual pet therapy because uh, before COVID-19, this was one of the most popular activities on campus. We had some lovely pet therapy dogs, full disclosure, I have a retired one, come to campus and uh, just hang out with students. And so now we do that virtually and it's a lot of fun. So it is really fun because dogs have both the I don't care and I love you so much and just can be just hilarious and something refreshing in our world where we're constantly connected to our screen. So I do encourage you to drop in. And this activity, can, you can join in with your little sister or your grandmother in France or your best friend who's in Japan. doesn't matter. It's just you don't have to be a member of the auto community. It is a public link. So feel free to join in. Now, the emotional pillar, I think Colin touched on this a little bit. And I do encourage you guys to click on the link and save it. A lot of students have this myth where, you know, I don't need to plan for this because I'm doing fine now. Um, in almost any, every place you've been in the world, you do know that there's some sort of emergency service if you are in a car crash or you fall down the stairs. <laughs> and most of you want to know that number in advance so you can deal with it. So same thing with the counseling services. You don't actually always need this in, in, um, in crisis. You, it's useful to have information about counseling and go there when you have situations or issues. But you want to make sure that you plan ahead not only for dealing with situations that could come up in your life, but also right now. The, a lot of people don't realize that counseling services can help you when you're doing well. And actually, you just want to improve a skill, like um, reducing procrastination. Sometimes they do workshops on that, stress, et cetera. Um, and they, they are actually doing a workshop on August 4th and uh, August 6th, one's in English, one's in French, I think, uh, for um, sharing their services and some really good tips for September. So I highly recommend that this is part of the overall orientation package and um, like you found for today. So I do recommend you sign up for that, especially if this is a pillar where you're like, yep, yeah, I tend to get really stressed or, yep, yeah, I may have some issues in my life or family that this could blow up this year. This may be my pillar that I want to work on. Please do. Now, the other thing I recommend is just making sure, again, that you have the tool to be able to remind you where to find these services at 3 in the morning or two years from now. I hope you'll remember that there's a very strange presenter who made you sing during the presentation, and oh, she mentioned this website multiple, multiple times. But even if you don't, what you can do is actually click on the moose and the owl, and if that doesn't work for you, you can also um, 
click underneath my photo in the file and the helping in someone in distress. So it's both helping someone and helping yourself. Knowing what resources exist and knowing what to look out for is very helpful. For those of you who can, you can print this out and uh, put it on your bulletin board. It's actually a nice color, so why not? All right, I know I'm moving fast here, guys. Sorry. Financial pillar. Like, I think it's great if oh, there are a lot of billionaires on this uh, presentation today, but let's face it, uh, students tend to be mostly on the poorer end of the spectrum. That doesn't mean that you can't feel secure in this pillar, that you don't have a little bit of money set aside for emergencies, that you don't have a specific budget set aside, so you know you can have fun with that budget and be flexible, even at the, like, much smaller uh, financial bank account side of the spectrum. But what is important about this pillar, and I, again, included a link you can click on the title there, and there's also upcoming presentations on the virtual wellness series, which I'll explain in a bit, um, that help you understand how to be, feel secure despite everything happening, having a plan, and uh, planning going forward. It's so much more um, comfortable, and you are reducing the stress, the biological stress in your body when you have a plan and you know where you can flex. So if this is something that you think is weaker for you, you may think there's maybe unexpected expenses coming up, start to plan ahead and plan with some experts if you need to by attending workshops, et cetera. Okay, physical. Now this pillar, I really, really recommend that you click on this link and save it. I, it's, it's very helpful. It is also the bottom of your plan document, but I do recommend you click on it. And this is the social wellness, sorry, the virtual wellness series that is up here. Now the virtual wellness series, we actually make sure that we have events um, in all the pillars, so it's actually quite helpful. But this was when we were on campus, you guys could walk around campus, see posters, and join it and drop into events, or go to the fitness center. Obviously with COVID-19, things have changed, so for now, and it may change going forward, but all of our events are online, even if in the future perhaps some may be hybrid. So you can attend yoga class, you can attend high, intens high intensity interval training, um, Zumba if you're into that, a lot of people love Zumba, and it's actually a great way to meet people. So it's amazing to meet people in engineering, but it's also fun to join into some class that you may enjoy and meet people in completely different contexts. I know there's some Zumba rides out there or what have you. Also, the virtual wellness series has things like um, pet therapy, my favorite, but all sorts of things. We've had gardening workshops, we've had fun workshops, we've had very helpful workshops on like sleep, etc. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who are in different time zones and may not be able to attend exactly at 1 p.m. on noon on a Friday or whenever the event is held, uh, a lot of the events are actually recorded and posted, and some of the workshops and the fitness classes are updated almost every week with new classes and routines from the trainers. So you get to know the trainers, and you get to perhaps do a routine at your own time at your own pace. So just know that that exists. There may be not be that many events this summer, maybe only 15 or 20 up there right now, um, but I do recommend you bookmark it because as the summer goes on, and especially since for September, there's so much happening. Like today, I don't know if most of you know that we have a concert, I believe, at uh, 7 p.m., with the Elijah Wood band and Jamie Find, and also a really well-known comedian after that. So if you guys are interested, I would highly recommend you attend virtually. Oh, for, before I forget, physical doesn't just mean fitness, although I spent a lot of time talking about it and we have a shoe on the screen. It also means nutrition, and that goes back to things like my uh, financial pillar and everything you have to do around wellness for your student. Obviously, you have a budget. Obviously, you have to deal with your social calendar. Obviously, you have to deal with your intellectual calendar, but knowing Making sure you're taking care of your body's health, super important. And I know it's hard, but if you plan ahead and you figure out where your weaknesses are, um, you may be able to find the resources. So, for example, the health promotion team and the university's nutritionist put on some great workshops and some great tips and even one-minute videos on recipes that are really good for student budgets and really fast recipes. So, again, I encourage you to start bookmarking the website, coming back over time because we keep adding more. And um, there's also a few other things. Uh, like the health promotion team is presenting August 4th. I'll get to that in a minute. Environmental. There's a great team on campus called the Office of Sustainability, and they do lots of amazing events throughout the year, and they also include, include some of their events um, in the virtual wellness series. But environment is more than just the world and the climate change, which, of course, are super important. But it's also the environment around you, and it, um, making sure that the environment around you works. Now, COVID-19 may have changed this for a lot of people, but whatever you can do to get some nature in life, Super important, even with the plant in the corner of your condo, that's helpful. If you can go for walks and get outside, amazing. But also your workspace. Prime your brain to know that this is time to focus, to study. Even if it's just a laptop with special stickers because you don't have your own room, or if it's a desk you're lucky enough to have, prime the workspace however it works for you so that you're ready to study. It'll help trigger your brain, especially when you don't want to study. 
intellectual. Now, a lot of students are like, oh my gosh, I have had to read so much for class, study so much for class, I can't handle one more thing. And that is totally understandable. But actually, the intellectual pillar is also about using that curiosity and using that biological human brain and finding, um, learning about things that are completely different actually refreshes your brain. And new experiences really help you to learn new things and, you know, balance out all that pressure you may have had of just studying or reading. Uh, a little bit of a fun fact, uh, I didn't get to use the Jeopardy music for this, but for those of you who know who Alex Trebek is, he's a very famous game show host of a show called Jeopardy. And for those of you who enjoy singing, please feel free to sing the uh, game show song. I didn't get to use it because of the bandwidth issues and because I frankly think my friends think I'm dorky. But, you know, for those of you who enjoy it, play the music in your head. But why I also put him up here? Fun fact, he's a UOTO alumni. Alumnus. I won't say that wrong. Last but not least, spiritual. Now, a lot of people um, sort of misinterpret uh, this to mean religion. Now, if religion fulfills you in this pillar, great. That's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's great. But the spiritual pillar is about being strong in a sense of self, feeling really confident. And I, I loved how Colin sort of mentioned earlier um, that Seneca quote, the mind should be allowed some relaxation, that it may return to its work all the better for the rest. Great quote, uh, Colin. And it's really about, um, the, one of the things that I include in this link is actually mindfulness uh, and uh, meditation workshops that are coming up. There's an English one on Thursday at 4 p.m. For those of you who can join in, great. Feel free to download an app if it's useful for you. Those are great ideas as well. But actually, mindfulness helps to train your brain and meditation in various ways, various methodologies, help to train your brain to focus uh, despite everything happening around you. So it's almost like fitness training for your brain, uh, depending on the context. Uh, but I really, really recommend that this is a pillar a lot of students neglect and yet can really help you long term. Okay, so I am going to uh, switch the poll here. All going well, the technology is going to let me do it. And so I want you to tell me, after you've had a bit of chance to reflect, despite everything I'm throwing at you, what do you think your stronger, strongest personal pillar of wellness is today? So, so far, oh, physical is winning, then it bounced. Ooh, financial. Cool to know that engineering students are probably doing better than some other fac faculties, that finding that's one of your strongest ones. Physical is still the strongest. But you guys can see it's individuals for each person, but you can see some areas that are common to most of you that fewer of you are clicking on. So just a little heads up. What do you think you need to work on? And also see what your colleagues are going to be working on. So actually, that was my strongest one. I apologize. I actually jumped ahead and kind of gave you the, the next uh, poll. I'm too excited. But the next poll is, what do you think your, um, hold on, sorry, too many things to click. Which pillar do you think you will need to work on now to help you going forward? So interestingly, of course, that switched a lot for people. So social connecting, and which I thought was great today. A lot of you are connecting in a chat. I've seen other faculties in the chat, you know, sort of share Instagram or other ways. And when you recognize people in your classes or you recognize people perhaps at yoga or whatever you're attending, a great way to connect, as well as joining in perhaps things like the concert tonight. And wow, social is the strongest. So that's good to know for this faculty. You guys all agree that that's one of the biggest things that you're going to be working on. Emotional strength, that's great. So again, what works for you is more important. You don't have to be going anywhere near what the poll says. But make sure in your plan you're thinking about this and planning ahead for your weakest, strongest, and what you need to adapt and find the resources available at the university or in the university community. Okay, so I'm going to ask those of you who are around to actually, uh, if you can, stand up. And if you're physically unable to, you can use your hands for this. Now, L means left, and uh, R means right, and those little um, icons are feet. I want you to learn this exercise from a diagram. Now, you guys are engineers, so I expect you to be able to learn from a diagram really well. And while you're doing that, I'll explain why. I did this to give you a break, of course. It's a lot to sit and listen to everyone for two hours. But also to remind you that you need to work to develop a new skill and to um, find the tools to be able to get you to succeed. Just a diagram may not be enough. So think about this. If you were shown this at two years old, would you be able to learn this skill? No, you develop the skills over the years to be able to read this diagram. Now, some of you might be going, wow, I do, well, I'm falling over. This is weird. My foot's going in the wrong place. Well, yeah, you have to learn. And you may have to uh, find out from an expert or um, watch some YouTube videos, whatever it is to learn this skill. But my whole point is that you actually have to practice to learn this skill. 
Now, for those of you who know what Blackpool means, you will actually know what this diagram means. But for those of you who don't, this is learning to waltz. Something else you can have fun doing. All right. Uh, I included this link just for a bit of fun. Uh, there's a member of my family who may be a bit of a star in this actual uh, video. So watch it afterwards. But it, it does help to describe a little bit of self-care. So if you have a minute, literally a minute to watch it, enjoy it. But students often think, and I think you guys have actually learned from Colin today, and you sort of indicated that you know that you do need to reach out and get support. You're here to learn, not just uh, engineering, which is super important, of course, but everything to help you support that engineering career you want. And so that includes working on your wellness and your life. And you sh we try really hard to mention that in Canada and around the world, stigma still exists. But reaching out for help early, reaching help for help, for help as a, a student going, you know what, I don't understand, or I'm struggling a little bit, or something's happened in my life, is very helpful. But just make sure you try and give people the opportunity to help. We can't read minds. I have mentioned this website a few times. So please bookmark it on your phone or laptop today, or write it down that plan. That would be ideal. It's also in the document I asked you to download. Now, I already mentioned the first website. Uh, you are all over the world today, so I do want to remind you guys that um, depending where you are in the world, you may not be able to connect with counseling services during the hours, etc. So there are services provided by U Ottawa, all, um, by a partnership, etc. around the world. So that's that second link. Uh, make sure you click and bookmark that. Um, uh, available sort of any time. I mentioned several times the virtual wellness series, which is on the mental health and wellness website, but I highly recommend you attend some of these things. I know it seems hard, but it's a great way to start to connect. Um, peer stories are little one-minute stories, kind of like what Colin did today, but just about people sharing their experiences at university. So I, if you want to enjoy that, they're one little one-minute stories. Um, pet therapy, like I mentioned, okay, I'm a little biased, but it's a lot of fun. And then um, the health promo team, I highly recommend you attend their workshop on August 4th or 6th, whatever language works for you. I, they can offer so much, and there's some, about 80 peer educators who are on their team over the years, so you'll get to see and get to know them um, by a chat or hopefully at some point in person. And last but not least, counseling services. I highly recommend August 4th or 6th that you attend their workshop. Oops, I forgot one more thing. For those of you who like certificates for your CV, you can attend the 90-minute online free Morphine on the Ground training and get a certificate to learn more about mental health and supporting others in the community in distress. I'll hand it back over to, I think, Emily. Thank you so much, April. That was really interesting. Before we move on to the next portion, I have a question for you. Uh, what is the one thing that you would recommend all new U Ottawa students to do in preparation for the fall term? Oh, well, other than the 30 minutes when I'm asking you to plan, <laughs> which I think is very, very important, I also recommend you actually plan not to plan a little bit. And by that I mean is be open to new experiences. Sometimes the most spontaneous things, the workshop you thought, I'm not going to attend Zumba, what the heck can I get out of Zumba? Whatever it is, is actually what can be, be the trigger and send you off in a direction that's really beneficial for your career or just life in general. I love that. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Um, April, will you be staying with us as well, uh, along with Colleen, and in case students want to reach out to you in the Q&A pod from now until the end of the session? I will be. So I'll be at the panel, and I'll try and answer the Q&A as fast as I can type. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, so this brings us to the last portion of today's session, a presentation about academic success at the Faculty of Engineering. You'll see another change in layout as we welcome our next presenters. Here we go. And folks, some of you asked me about this earlier on. You should see at the bottom uh, left of your screen uh, room to input your student numbers if you haven't done so already. So feel free to add that uh, if you haven't had the chance to do this uh, in, while we're warming up for, for today's session. And now please join me in welcoming José Gravelin, Student Experience Officer at the Faculty of Engineering, and Désiré Benoit, Senior Officer of Academic Development and Operations at Hi the Faculty everyone. of Engineering. Hi both, how are you today? Hi everyone, thank you for joining us at the information session this morning. Uh, my name is José Gravelin, I'm the Student Experience Officer, and joining me today is my colleague Désiré Benoit, she's the Senior Officer at the Undergraduate Office. We're delighted for you to um, to come and join us virtually for the next 30 uh, minutes 
we will share some highlights that you might find useful in order to start your program on the right foot. In addition, we'll do our best to answer all of your questions. I saw lots of questions this morning, and we will try to answer as best as we can at the end of our presentation. So um, during our presentation, you will notice that I, off, I, I often refer to the UOttawa web pages, and at the end of the presentation, you'll be able to download a resource document with all clickable links of web pages and the most useful social media for the first uh, for year one students. So just don't look for this document just yet because it's not available to you, but it will be available at the end of the presentation. So before we get started, I have a few questions for you. So let's move into the question poll. Let's see. What best describes you right now? So we'll take a few moments to answer this question. Okay, just a few more seconds. All right, great. Thank you for answering. So I can see that a lot of you are also very curious and also very excited to start your program. So that's really great. But I can also see some of you have concerns and um, we'll see if we'll be able to uh, uh, get some information to you so that we um, kind of like uh, attempt to uh, reduce the uh, worrying on your part. So let's move into the second question. And which term are you enrolled in? Fall, winter, or boat? Okay, great, thank you for answering. So I can see that most of you are actually registered for both, and this is actually the right answer. So if for the ones that are only registered for the fall, at the end of our presentation, go ahead and, and register for both terms, um, and that will be awesome. Okay, so great. So let's move into the, our presentation now. So here at a glance, at the Faculty of Engineering, there's over 4,500 undergraduate students. We're located in the largest technology center in Canada. We have a great diversity. 37% of our students are actually international. And our placement rate of more than 96% with the co-op program. So for those of you also interested in research, there's 15 research chairs as well. At the Faculty of Engineering, um, your program of study falls under one of these three departments or the school. It is important for you to understand your program of study compulsory courses, elective courses, and optional courses. I invite you to read the description of each course by consulting the course catalog. This link will be provided to you at the end as well. And also, view the schedule of the course offered at each term. So there's a, a web page where you can actually view the schedule. So you have to be careful that certain courses are only offered in e either of the two terms. It's either in the fall or in the winter. So to simplify and to make sure that you're registered to the right course, we ask that you follow your course sequence at each term. It will make it easier for you to know exactly which course is offered and which one you should register to. You are also familiar 
already with the yields on the student portal. You have noticed that you are very independent and fully responsible for your schedule and your studies. That said, when the University of Ottawa or the faculty has information to tell you, we will contact you via your UOttawa email only. So please read your emails frequently. In addition, all the information you are looking for, if you have any questions, can be found online on the UOttawa website. So as I mentioned earlier, I provided you with a document with clickable links and those web pages are uh, available to you at the end. Here's what a course sequence looks like. Course sequence are available by program per year of study. Make sure you follow the correct course sequence based on your, on your year of admission. Following your course sequence gives you the course you will need to take each term. The sequence takes into account prerequisite courses for the next term. So during your studies, if ever you are out of sequence and you need advice, feel free to contact the undergraduate office. So how do I organize your first course? Well, for starters, all your courses in the fall will be offered virtually. So is your lab, and each professor will use teaching platforms of their choice. So, so for example, they might be using Microsoft Teams, Adobe Connect, Zoom, Brightspace, and more platforms. It is all up to the professor to decide which platform they will use. So, and as well, all professor will share with you a course plan, which we call a syllabus, with students, with all of you, with uh, your virtual campus Brightspace. So the course plan, you need to read it carefully and do not hesitate to ask questions to your professor and teaching assistant. The course plan contains all the information you need to plan your study. There's gonna be quiz dates, midterm exams, et cetera. So it is important to take into account all of your course plan in order to create a complete schedule. So please mark your, all of your project assignments, deadlines, uh, your lab uh, dates, your DGD, the lectures, the quizzes, the midterm, and, and more. So this area will show an example of a schedule a little later. So in the syllabus, the professor will also provide some information on the purchase of textbooks and how the course material will be available to you. So um, they will provide you with that information. Also, also, at the end of our presentation, I also included a description sheet for you to be able to purchase a computer or software that you will access at the end. So if you're unsure, you also received an, e an email recently, but if you're unsure, you can ask your professor or you can also uh, send an email to the uh, technology services. Professor's expectations. Well, professors expect you guys to be curious, to read, to ask questions, and to partic participate in all of your virtual courses. Each professor has their own teaching style, and you will have to adapt quickly. Motivation and curiosity are needed when you start your online program. You're right to be excited because you're going to learn so much new theory in your engineering program. It is a full-time job, so once the restrictions are lifted and you're you're able to return on campus, you will have the opportunity to discover beautiful spaces in STEM complex to put the theory you have learned into practice. It's not enough to learn just the theory by heart. You have to be able to explain it and put it into practice. So now I'll give the floor back to Desiree so she'll be able to briefly explain the evaluation scale. Hi again, everyone. So at the university, the rating scale is completely different. So the alpha score is translated by a numerical value, ranging from 0 to 10. For first year engineering courses, the passing mark is B+. And for second year engineering courses, the passing mark is B+. In order to be in good academic standing, your CGPA grade point average must be at 5.0. So as you see, it's a C on the scale on the screen. 
Finally, if your CGPA is under 3.0, so, uh, oh, sorry, if your average is between 4.9 and 3.0, you will be placed on academic probation. And if it's under 3.0, so 2.9, you will be removed from the Faculty of Engineering. At any time during your studies, if you have any questions about your academic performance, the team at the Undergraduate Studies Office is available to answer your questions and concerns. Please note that the rating scale will be presented in detail by the academic administrator and the vice dean of the undergraduate office during the welcome week on Tuesday, September 8th. It is super important for you to attend. You will receive an information via email, don't worry. Your first year, you start in a virtual environment, but eventually you will set foot on campus. Here are three images of all of the pavilions you will frequently visit. You will often hear students refer to those buildings by using the acronym SITE, STEM, TBY building. So the three images here will be very familiar for you, for you soon. Find your balance. As Josie mentioned, it is important to register for both fall and winter terms and to follow your course sequence. Here's an example of a course schedule only. As you have the freedom to choose your schedule, it is important to know how to balance your education, work, social events, activities, healthy habits, and sleep. Most of you are full-time students, so if it's super important to manage your time properly and learn what are the best learning habits for you. And now, here you have an example of what a first year student schedule might look like if we include classes, study hours, and your social life. You will notice that no one really tells you what to do, but that does not mean you don't, you don't have to follow the important responsibilities. Plan your schedule, manage your time, your success depends on it. The undergraduate office if you have any changes to make to your program you are encouraged to contact the undergraduate office a senior officer and or academic advisor will be happy to inform you you can reach us by email be concise and detail when requesting information or an appointment for example you need an appointment let us know your availability Three possible dates, for example, and make sure that you add the topic of the discussion. All information, forms, and procedures are listed on our um, undergraduate study webpage. So do your research and be able to meet the deadline. Do not leave anything last minute. We serve 4,500 students and the undergrad at the undergraduate studies office. Explore your field of study. It is common for students to start in one program and change paths in another program. It can happen and it's super normal. Optional courses are a great way to explore other subjects outside of engineering. However, deadlines must be taken into account. It is possible to change the course selection and or program of study. Talk to your academic advisor for your interest. Academic rules and regulations. You are looking for some reading to do before you start your program. You will be able to consult all the academic rules and regulations, as well as the academic, important academic dates and deadlines. The two web links included in the document are crucial to your academic success. How to manage your finances. There are many ways to combine sources of income throughout your study. You would like to work on campus or at the Faculty of Engineering during your studies, I invite you to look for employment opportunities on campus with the work study program. And yes, these positions are virtually available. For example, if you like to help your colleagues and you exceed in your classes, you can become a mentor from the second year. If you are interested, you will have the opportunity to discuss opportunities with your mentor at the mentoring center. Also, many scholarships are available to students. 
please take the advantage of this opportunity and visit the financial aid and scholarship website. Many students do not take the time to apply. It is a super easy way to get free money. Do not forget the Faculty of Engineering Scholarship. Now I give the floor back to Jose. Hey guys, are you ready for the last question? Let's see. From the beginning of the presentation to now, which feeling describes you the best? Go ahead and vote. Five more seconds. Great, thank you for answering. So let's look at uh, your the answers. So most of you feel reassured with a few, well half, of, more, more than half is feeling reassured with a few questions, so that's great. Some ha are worried still, but not as much, and we'll try to answer those questions in the Q&A. Uh, if you still need help with registration, I invite you to send an email to mentors with an S at uottawa.ca. They'll be able to help you. And some of you need help when you arrive in September. And in my next, pre uh, in my next segment, I'll um, share with you where you can find some help. So let's move forward. Perfect, so there is help everywhere on campus. It's all about asking for it. It is strongly encouraged that students speak with their professor and teaching assistant. In your first year, you will also have a personal, personalized academic advisor and a personalized mentor. Do not forget the mentors know all of the resources available on campus and they are easily accessible. So furthermore, mentors excel in their studies and they will be happy to help you. Um, there's going to be some moments of uncertainty and worries and misunderstanding and that's normal. Give yourself a chance to adapt and do not stay alone with your thoughts. As soon as you arrive in September, you will be assigned a personalized mentor. Mentor will reach out and will contact you via email or through Microsoft Teams each week to make sure everything is okay during your first term. It's also, whoops, sorry about that. Move too quickly. It's also important to use a reliable resource when you feel overwhelmed at the personal and academic level. Our mentors are here to help you. Our priority is your success. In addition, we are very excited about our new Engineering Peer Connect program. This program aims to facilitate social integration of all of our students at the Faculty of Engineering this fall. This program is offered to all students at all levels. You can be matched with anybody at a different level based on your interest. So if you're interested, you must register via our webpage, which will only be available at the end of August. We're actually working on it right now. It will be a great way to meet other students and make friends. Several members of our clubs and student associations are also interested in this program as well. So there are many benefits to join. So more information um, to follow a little bit later. So stay tuned and watch your email. So passing it on to Desiree to talk about yes, the so top 10 recommendations. You should memorize. So we'll go uh, through them quickly. So take charge of your academic success. You can do it. Set your priorities, plan your own schedule, network, your peers, teachers, mentors, and friends. Be proactive and not reactive. Start planning your, for your future in the first year. Attend classes, understand concepts, learn with your classmates and take your program seriously. Ask questions, ask for help. Your support team will guide you 
along the way. Define your work-study life balance. Be passionate and enjoy your studies. And finally, stay informed. Okay, so in closing, um, guys, we strongly recommend that you stay in the loop. So do not forget to download all the full social media and web page resource document that I, we've been referring to. There's also going to be a possibility to join the competitive clubs and association, which is included in the document. Don't forget for some of you that haven't registered for both terms to do so as well and verify your email your U Ottawa emails only uh, moving forward. Let us know as well if you wanted to participate in the Seed Design Week. Uh, as of last Friday, there was more than 120 students that registered and the registration was only all open for two days. So great way to make friends as well. Um, so this uh, Seed Design Week will be happening in August. Also, we're gonna be sharing with you some departmental pre-recorded information session and we'll be sharing with you virtual lab visits as well and as i mentioned before the peer connect program will also be available in august as of september 8th the faculty of engineering welcome day there's going to be some live sessions with the dean vice dean program directors and professor live just before and also you will be able to meet your personalized mentor as well in a session. So it's gonna be a great opportunity for you again to ask more questions before the start of your class. So I'd like to thank you today for your time. I wish you a good summer and great start to your new program of study. So thank, thank you for you being both. here. This was really informative. We can see all the students here in the Q&A having all these questions for you both. Uh, so maybe we could take a few moments uh, to, to answer some of the most recurrent questions that we've had. Uh, one of them being, has the university received my transcripts and when should I expect to receive confirmation of this? Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yes. So the transcript, actually, if it's with admission, so if it's upon admission when you, you apply at the University of Ottawa, it should uh, be sent to the admissions office. You should get in touch with them if they were missing some documents. So I invite the students specifically to, to communicate with the admissions office uh, regarding this matter. Great. Thank you so much, Desiree. Another question here. Uh, has it been confirmed that the fall term will be entirely online? And what about the winter term? So someone in the Q&A said, uh, before you mentioned that if physical distancing guidelines are lifted and an online course you're enrolled in ends up being offered on campus, you will not be required to show up in person. Once you're enrolled in an online course, it will be your choice to complete it via distance learning or in person. Uh, is this what will happen at the Faculty of Engineering as it stands? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, um, I can answer that question. For the fall term, we already confirmed that it's going to be 100% online. We're following the guidelines closely with public health. And as soon as uh, the summer progress, more information will be provided to us regarding the winter term. So right now, the fall is 100% online. And even if the guidelines were lifted and there was um, um, some uh, some participations in person, we will make sure that all of our um, uh, labs or lectures are available uh, online so that students can continue with their terms online as well. For the winter term, we are waiting for directions from the university. It has not been confirmed that the uh, term will be completely online. As soon as we know, we will uh, send an email to all students informing them via email. This is great. Thank you so much for, for clarifying that for our students. Um, I heard you mention something about uh, some courses still being marked as in person, but having you really clarify that for the fall, everything will be online. Uh, I think it's a great uh, reassurance for our students. Um, what can you say as far as days of lab appearing as uh, not applicable? I am confirming this information uh, at the moment. So 
especially what we see on the time uh, table, the information, you like, I'm unsure for now, but the best person to speak to would be the, uh, the professor, directly to the professor, how he or she will present the material. But for sure, um, everything should be available via distance learning, that's, that's for sure. So the best person to speak to at the moment, uh, if you don't have the contact information for, for your professors right now, uh, it will become available to you during the first week of school via the course syllabus. So at the moment, if there's no location or the information is missing, I would say to communicate with, uh, with the professor directly. Great. And if I can add to this as well, uh, Emily, um, regarding the, there's going to be pre-recorded session information from, from programs. And this is one of the questions I'm asking the program director to specify in their pre-recorded information session. These sessions will be available to all students um, online mid to late August. We'll have all that information clarified and professors are actually working online right now throughout the summers to make sure that whatever they're offering is going to be quality um, um, lectures and labs as well so that the students can benefit from it uh, being online learning. So we're working on it. More to follow. Thank you so much for this. In terms of this uh, information session that you mentioned for mid to end of August, uh, do students have to take any steps in order to register for this or will they hear from you and, and know exactly what's expected for them to participate? Right. What we're trying to do is that we're going to do some pre-recorded information session. We'll, once the, everything is online and on our webpage, we will be sending an email to all students to uh, review these information sessions. It might, it might generate some questions, and on September 8th, we'll come back in a live session where program directors will be able to answer some of those questions live during the uh, September 8th welcome. Perfect, uh, thank you so much. Day. Josie and Dithry, will you stay with us for the remainder of the session? Yes, absolutely. Great, absolutely. okay, wonderful. Um, so folks at home, you should be seeing another change in layout happening now. Uh, I want to take a moment to remind you that you could still register to the various webinars that allow you to personalize your U orientation. A great programming will be offered from July 20 to August 21. I believe the programming from July 20 to 23 targets mainly students who will be living in residence this fall. If that's you, and I know that some of you in the session today are in residence because we've received questions from you, please check out what's planned at those dates. So again, that's July 20 to 23. Some of the webinars offered later on will cover topics that may be of interest to international students, such as the Canadian health system and immigration. If that's you, check out what's offered so that you can find out more. Meetings with regional mentors are also scheduled from August 4 to 14, so you may want to look into that as well in order to connect with a fellow student. Visit our website to, to view the full programming and to register to interactive webinars on academic integrity, social distancing, campus reality in 2020, as well as several U Ottawa services that can support you in your transition, such as the mentoring service, for example. Before we open the floor up to more questions, I'd also like to invite you to explore the resources available in the helpful links pod and the share file pod at the bottom of your screen. So these, uh, these uh, links and documents should be of use to you. And, I, and actually, we've had some questions throughout the session, uh, students wondering, will these come back at the end? Yes, here they are now. Uh, so please click on the topics that interest you, download these documents, uh, open up those web pages, and feel free to uh, bookmark any of the pages that you think might help you uh, to get started this fall. All right, folks, so this brings our session to a close. How about a round of applause for today's presenters? Let's see you guys send us some class. Oh, yeah, that feels good. 
All right. It was a pleasure to spend the morning with you. I hope you found the answers you were looking for. If you have any further questions, please connect with us during the post-session Q&A. As we mentioned early on in the session, the room will remain open for another 15 minutes or so. Uh, those who have to go can leave with peace of mind. We don't have any content that's planned during the post-session Q&A. Uh, we will be bringing back Colin, April, José, and Desiree for those of you who wish to stick around a while longer. And those of you who have to go, please be sure to fill out the survey as you leave. Your feedback will really help us improve the student experience for your fellow GGs. All right, so let's open up the floor here to more questions. In a few moments, you should see our four presenters checking back in. And during this time, um, Simon, Mathilde, Mariette and myself, we will try to keep answering questions in the Q&A pod, but we'll also be looking at what comes in so we can ask our four presenters uh, what their thoughts are. So let's start with maybe a more technical question. Uh, we've seen come up a couple of times questions about textbooks. So maybe José and Desiree, you can tell us how students will be able to ex access their textbooks uh, for an online semester. Yeah. So um, the information will be available on the course syllabus. Your professor will let you know exactly what you need, where to get them uh, during the first week of school. So um, it, that information will, will be given to you, so don't worry. It is, a, it is different this year because it's all online. So um, as of right now, just wait for, for the information that will be uh, given to you from your professor. All right. And if a student is put on a waiting list for a course, should they enroll in other courses in case they don't get in, or should they simply wait? Um, wait list courses, I mean, it's super important to verify first if there's another section that can fit in your schedule. If there isn't, you can stay on the wait list for now. It is still, you know, manageable in time for you to potentially be registered into the class. I invite you to send us an email to back and forth. The email address is available um, somewhere in, in the pod uh, and on our website. So we would like to take a look at your schedule, see what we can do. But as I mentioned and Josie mentioned a lot during the presentation, following your sequence is so important. So we want to make sure that all first year students do that so that there's no repercussions for, for the next term. So definitely send us a quick email. We can verify. Being on the wait list at this point in time is not the end of the world, but uh, we would like to check that with you. I know I'll, if I can add to that as well, is if students want to reach out to mentors with an S at uottawa.ca, they are also available this summer to help students uh, to look at their schedule and to make sure that everything is okay. So the, ad, the email address is mentors with an F. Thank you so much, Josie and And now maybe a question for April. Uh, we had some students asking us how they could be social in an online setting. Sorry, um, for those of you who are, are participating in the science faculty, you uh, you know that I have pets and uh, I muted myself and then I forgot about it. Anyway. Um, so barking and cat, hopefully meowing is over for a moment. So how to be social. So I did mention a few things. So I do recommend um, outside of your faculty to consider a few things. Like we have on the virtual wellness series today. That's one of the links you can actually click on um, the mental health and wellness link in that helpful links pod and actually look at the concert details and how to join in at, later today. So that's one advantage. I think if we have a little time at the end of this, um, Amelie usually brings back the chat pods. You guys can actually, what I thought was really cool with other faculties is people were sharing their Instagram handles or Twitter or whatever um, to be able to actually set up groups. So you can be like, who's, you know, this type of engineering, that type of engineering, Colin, and everybody else will know engineering better than me. But you can actually connect a bit today at the end of the session. That's one of the great ways to connect, just meeting people from your, um, your actual uh, cohort. And uh, think, just join in things you would not naturally join in. September is going to be super busy, and it's great when you can join into things, but try joining in now and saying, oh, yeah, no, not a fan of Zumba, 
but I love yoga, whatever. And that's another way to be social um, and join in and meet people. But there's actually a great ways, um, like uh, Jose mentioned, reaching out to the mentors and getting their ideas. They know what works for your area, someone like Colin and all sorts of people who know what works for your faculty. So getting ideas from fellow students is the best. That's a long answer. Sorry. Well, thank you so much, April. This is great. And actually, maybe now a question for Kale. Um, how can students get in touch with mentors such as yourself this term? I think we've touched on that a bit, but we seem to have a lot of interest. So, as I was saying uh, earlier in my presentation afterwards, uh, we are going to be reaching out every single week to, uh, to send emails out to see if people need help and like to let people know what kind of study groups are going on. And so really just checking your email and then, uh, you know, coming to the study groups, you know, responding to the emails if you need help. Really just check your email is probably the best way to do that. Great. And another question. And if I can add to that. Yeah, go for it, Josie. I'd like to add to, um, that's great. So um, we will have uh, also the possibility to do individual consultations, so a one-on-one. -on -one. There's also going to be group discussions, uh, as Kalei mentioned, study groups as well. There's also going to be all, um, a possibility of chatting with mentors as well. So in different time zones, that, that could be practical as well. So as Kalei mentioned, we will be reaching out to you, but also, feel free to reach out to your mentors as well. Um, under the Faculty of Engineering, there's a, a student experience tab where you will find the mentoring center uh, information and contact information. And also in the document that you downloaded, I also included the link. Thank you so much, Josie. Go ahead and Another question, and I'm not sure, Colleen, if, if you can help us with this one. A student asks, any suggestions on a laptop to buy for computer science? Now, I'm not sure if this corresponds to your program or if you know someone who's in computer science and what their preferences seem to be. Um, I definitely think that it really depends on, like, your preference. So, you know, like, obviously, computer science, you are doing a lot of coding. So you probably want something good, but I don't really have any advice to give in terms of that. Maybe you could ask your professor or, like, someone else you know in the program, but, yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea, Kelly. Yeah, and also, if I can add, um, the Technology Support Services, they also sent out an email to students recommending them a different kind of a laptop. And also, at the end of the presentation in the document, I we included a description as well, which kind of laptops. Uh, Thank you so much for that. Now, I was just going to add to, to Kelly's answer. Uh, that might be a great way actually to start socializing using chat pods during your online courses. So uh, checking in with people and seeing, hey, uh, what's your program? Uh, what computer did you get? You know, what would you recommend? Uh, so perhaps mentors can help you out with that. Uh, definitely the links and information provided uh, by Josie can help you out with that. But it's also a nice way to kind of get the ball rolling for you to socialize with your peers. Um, another question that we see here uh, in, in the, the Q&A pod that, that's come back more than once uh, is regarding the access to U Ottawa email accounts. So Josie and Desiree, do you know uh, why certain students would have difficulty accessing their U Ottawa student account and what they should do to troubleshoot this problem? They have to register for yeah, their so course, to right? Yeah, anything, you should have, the students should have received an email from the admissions office uh, to activate all their accounts, uh, the password and everything, which if you're having trouble with, you should speak to the IT services of the University of Ottawa. They will be able to help you out with that. But I think to, to start the activation, you, you have to, to register for courses. I'm not 100% sure. When I was a student, it was it was a little bit different. So it would be to check in, in the emails that they received at the beginning of uh, of their their process when they were accepted. They should have received all of that information. And again, if it's not accessible, it's the IT services that uh, would be able to, to help you out with that. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, another question here related to courses. We have some students asking about exams. So I don't know if you two ladies have any information about what 
uh, exams will look like in an online setting or if it will differ from one prof to another, uh, but maybe you know a little bit more about this and can help enlighten students. I'm sorry, send a question. We uh, repeated it. It's sure, sorry about that. So a lot of students are asking what exams will look like in an online setting. And I was wondering if you guys knew uh, if the faculty will be taking one same approach for all exams in all courses, so maybe using one software in particular, one methodology in particular, or if it will be up to the prof's discretion. Uh, to administer exams in, in, in the way they prefer in each course. The exams, uh, well, with the summer term, it was like a, a trial. It was the first time we, we, we did that right all online. So again, the professor, uh, there is, it's all going to be online. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like on a live setting. Students have three hours, for example, to complete the exam, or it's going to be done differently. Uh, that's with the professor. It will be uh, the information again will be given on the syllabus in the syllabus uh, during the first week of school. Any questions about how they will proceed um, should be asked to them at the moment. Great, thank you so much. So I guess one of the key takeaways from today's orientation session is stay informed. Go on the links that have been sent to you uh, when you get your course outlines look up your, your professor's contact information and, and reach out to them. Uh, don't just wait. Uh, they might have answers that they can provide uh, to help you get started on the right foot. And maybe one last question uh, that we can add. Oh, did you have something to add, Vivian? I just wanted to clarify a little something. I think during the presentation I did something and I didn't say the right information. So to clarify, the first year courses um, the grade, the passing grade is a D, and for the rest of the courses, 2000 and up, for the Faculty of Engineering, it is B+. Again, that information will also be given by the professor at the time being, but uh, it's, it's a D for 1000 level courses and B plus for 2000. Thank you for that uh, specification. Maybe one last question before we move on to just uh, trying to wrap up all these questions in the Q&A pod. Uh, for Colin, are there any specific computer or calculator recommendations? Um, as I was saying before, a good way to, uh, to see what kind of computer you need is uh, maybe ask your professor, talk to other people who have done it. Um, you know, generally, I think there was a specification of like the, the types of, spe of specs you need sent out a couple of days ago by um, the regional mentors or something. So that's a good way, like if you check your email, there should be that on it. Um, in terms of calculator, those are usually talked about by the professors during the first week of class. And for me, like the most important thing there is just programmable calculators generally aren't allowed. So that really, as long as you don't have a programmable calculator, you're probably good. All right, thank you so much, folks. Our time is almost up, so we won't be taking any additional questions in this radio show format, but you are welcome to scroll through the answers that have been provided earlier on in the Q&A pod during the entire session. Uh, we hope that you have been able, we have been able to answer, uh, if not all, well, then most of your questions. Please reach out to us if there's anything you wish to discuss further. On behalf of the Academic Support Unit, I want to thank you all again for your time, your patience, and your energy today. Remember that you'll be able to access the recording of today's session at a later date, if ever you wish to clarify any other information. We wish you a great rest of summer, and we hope to see you again during the Personalize Your U Orientation webinar. We'll keep our experts on hand. Uh, we'll bring back the music from, from the beginning, bring back the chat, the chat pod, and leave the room open for another few minutes. Thank you so much again, everyone, for your participation.
The room will be closing in the next few seconds. Again, please fill out the survey when you leave. It really was a pleasure to be with you this morning, and we really look forward to meeting you again during the Personalize Your U Orientation webinars and later this fall. Thank you for being with us this morning.